Well, hey guys, thanks for tuning back into my channel. I know it's been a minute. It's almost spring. I'm trying to get prepped for the craft fairs. I also work another business, so sometimes time can run away from me. But anyways, I got a great craft idea for you guys. So do you guys have any of these in your house? Or do you know somebody like your mom or your grandma? Um, have you found them in uh, secondhand stores and you thought, they're kind of cute, but it's not for me. How about we turn one of these into a gnome? Yeah, a gnome. Super cute. Guys, if you're interested in making that teacup into a gnome, keep watching. Okay, guys, to make this little gnome, some of the things that you are going to need, these are the tools you're going to need. You're going to need um, some hot glue some kind of a long-term hold glue. I use Gemtech. Mod Podge, your choice, what kind you want, I use high gloss. Some paint to paint the noses, some glue sticks, some safety pins, something to cut. Um, I like to use this little mini hacksaw. Some wax paper, a paintbrush, a pair of scissors, a pen, a dotting tool. This holds gems. This pull, be it like a gem picker. This is the dotting tool. You need a dotting tool. You need new nose pliers and some wire cutters. Okay guys, this is what you're going to need to make the uh, teacup gnome. You're going to need some um, air dry clay and this is from Basic Products. Um, it's called Fluffy um, Air Dry Clay. I will link um, the down below in the description as to the company that actually makes these. You'll need a paper clip. You'll need a styrofoam cone. This is, um, I do believe it's like a two inch cone. I didn't measure it, but it's one of the smaller cones. You'll need one, two and a half inch half of a styrofoam ball, not the whole thing. You'll need some embellishments. I'm choosing to use ladybugs, little flowers I got from the Dollar Tree, a couple of red beets I got, also got from the Dollar Tree, a nose that I made out of baked clay, and some feathers and the feathers are actually from Hobby Lobby. There's a little um, area where you can do think leather working and they sell these little fancy feathers and they're actually just cut up pieces. So it's three dollars and forty nine cents. You get a big bag of it, pretty good size, and they got all different size um, feathers in there. So you'll also need a hundred percent acrylic yarn that you turn into hair and if you haven't watched one of my hair tutorials I will um, put a card up right there for it. Um, these are actually done a little bit different. Um, the basics are still the same. Tie it in a knot, brush it out, um, flat iron it, and then if you choose to curl it, I have a tutorial on how to curl the hair. You're also going to need a piece of fabric, a couple pieces of pipe cleaner, and of course your teacup. So those are the items that you're going to need, so let's get started. Also, if you choose to put a rhinestone on the nose of the gnome, you can use rhinestones or you can use little tiny beads, whatever kind of embellishments you want to stick on there. And I'm going to use um, rhinestones for my embellishment on my nose. All right, guys, so I'm going to take this basic um, air dry clay and I'm going to roll it into some shoes. And so what you do is you take a little piece and you squish it down and you make a toe kind of on the narrow side and then a flatter part will be the heel. Now once you've got both of your pieces made you're going to roll up another piece and you're going to roll it into a tube just like so. Roll it out and then you're going to flatten it with your finger. Then you're going to roll it around your finger and join the ends. Squish it down a little bit. Then you're going to set it down on top of your foot. Then you're going to seal it up, rub the pieces together real gently until they seal to each other. Now you gotta kind of work fast with this kind of clay um, or it, it's it's like 
um, fun clay for kids. It's it dries and it's like real, like uh, it's kind of hard to describe. It feels like uh, fun foam, only hard, and you can shape it. So next, you're going to take that paper clip and you're going to unfold it. Then you're going to clip off a piece. Then you're going to take your needle nose pliers and you're going to roll it into a little circle so that it's not sharp. Then you're going to bend it into like a hook shape. Like so. Then you're going to insert it into the shoe a little bit into that fun foam. Don't bury it too deep. Just, if you can see, it's just barely stuck in there. Then you're going to get another piece of foam. And you're going to roll it into like a little tubular ball um, so that it doesn't touch the edges. And then you're going to squish it down inside there. And be careful, don't push too hard you'll, or you'll push the paper clip all the way through. And uh, I've done that. So be very ginger with this stuff. And it, it's non-toxic. It, you know, it's meant for like little kids to play with. But it dries, it gets really hard, and, you know, not hard like clay. Um, it's like fun foam hard. It, it's, uh, it's squishy, kind of. So now what you'll do is, once you've made your little shoes, is you're going to put them off to the side to dry. And what you're going to want to do is put them on some parchment paper. Because as these dry, they get a little tacky. And so whatever surface that they're on, they're going to try to stick to it. And parchment paper keeps them from sticking. So next we're going to paint our little nose. So I did not have any like peach colored. So I mixed pink and white. And then you're going to take your Mod Podge and put it on your little your little nose makes it shiny and it makes the paint stay permanent and I use my finger as you all know I don't use paint brushes not very often every once in a great while I will but just push it on put it on there and let it dry so next we're going to uh, roll this cone roll the fabric onto this cone so you're just gonna roll it up Leave a little bit, like a like a quarter inch on the very bottom, so that you can fold it up. So you're gonna you're gonna mark off where you're gonna cut it. Now I know some of you have made cone gnomes before, so you just draw your little design, and you're gonna cut it out like so. Then you're going to roll it up. Now, however you want to glue it. You can glue it. I like to use gem tack and hot glue. So I put a couple little pins to hold it in because this fabric is real silky. It's the Dollar Tree um, costumes that you can get. The, the little ladybug and the bumblebee. This is the ladybug one. It's a little skirt. So the fabric is actually really slick. So I use a couple of straight pins to keep the material from sliding. And so then I just put the glue on there, roll it up, and I got a little bit too much gem tack there. It kind of squeezed out. So I try to spread it out a little bit. And then I stick my little straight pins in there. And I put it off to the side to the dry. So now it is all dry, ready to put the bottom on. So take the pins out. And I'm going to draw a circle. And at first I try to use that one. And um, yeah, it's not flat. So I go and grab a fresh one and draw a circle. Probably would benefit to draw that first before you start doing the whole thing, the whole assembly, but you know, hindsight. So now you'll stick your bottom piece on there. Now you're going to cut your styrofoam ball in half and roll it so that it'll fit inside the top of that teacup.
I had to roll this ball a lot to get it fit in there. So there you go. It's all, it's nice and snug in there. And the next thing you're going to do is you're going to cut a little hole in the middle of that ball. I used my scissors. And the reason why you're going to cut a hole in that ball is if you don't, the hat sits too high on the cone. So I cut a hole so that the cone fits up inside there. I don't cut all the way through, but I cut most of it out. And you'll see, I'm going to stick the cone on there just to make sure that it doesn't uh, sit too high. So I grabbed some ribbon, and I forgot to tell you, you're going to need some ribbon. So ribbon, and you want to go almost all the way around. And then you're going to take your hair, and then you're going to lay your ribbon down. And now make sure you put some parchment paper down. I totally forgot to do this, and my ribbon wanted to stick to my fiskers. Um, so please, make sure you put it on parchment paper or a silicone mat. So you'll put some uh, super glue down or, hyper, or uh, hot glue down, and you're going to lay your little cut piece of hair down on there. You're going to pat it down until it sticks all of it sticks and then you'll cut yourself another piece now I'm doing a double layer so I wanted some black um, curls and I wanted the red straight behind there so I started off with the red with the black curls because that's what's going to be on the outside so I'm just gonna put all of the glue on there and spacing out the curls so they go all the way across the ribbon so, and then about this time I realized, oh, oh, my glue is sticking to my sheet. Okay, so my Fiskars mat is completely ruined. I, I've done so many things to that thing. <laughs> Please don't do this. Please put some parchment paper down. Um, you know, I'm staring at that parchment paper thinking to myself, I should pull off a piece of that. And I just didn't do it. Just uh, kept right on going saying, well, I already ruined my Fiskars mat. Might as well just keep right on going. So... All right, so let me put some music on. You can watch me put the hair on here. I don't think you need to hear me talk anymore about this, so I'm gonna put some music on. All right, got it all done. Now I'm going to trim off the excess glue so that it doesn't have an, the, you know, don't have any extra. Trim off the bottom so it looks like she's got a nice little haircut. And then we're going to take that little ball and we're going to wrap, oop, wrapped it inside out. There we go. There we go. So you wrap the the hair the way you want it to look. So I wanted the the black curls to be on the outside. So I'm going to take some uh, glue here and I'm going to glue it to the styrofoam ball. Then I'm going to grab a straight pin and pin this thing on there so that it has a chance 
to cure. So you're going to put all the glue on there, wrap it all the way around, and then you're going to take some straight pins and you'll put it just at the very front and then at the back corners. And then you're going to add some permanent glue, whatever glue you're going to use. I like to use Gemtac. You can use E6000. E6, uh, you can use uh, super glue, anything you want, but I use gem tack. So now I'm going to let it dry. So now the cone is all done and the hair is all done and I'm going to put the cone together with the hair. So I'm going to cut an extra little bit off so that the uh, styrofoam ball sits a little bit lower inside the cone. So there we go. I like the way she looks and so now I'm going to fold her out, put some gem tack in there Put a little bit of hot glue in there, then I'll put the cone on, and then hold it until the hot glue cools and cures. So I can take I can take the straight pins out because the hair is now dry. So I'm gonna take the hair, straight pins out. Check her out there. She, she's looking pretty good. So there's the teacup. Now I'm gonna put the teacup on there. Give it a dry fit. Make sure I like it the way it's at. Make sure she slides down far enough. Then I'm going to add some hot glue. Put some hot glue in there. Into the teacup. And then add a little bit of gem tack. Because again, you want the long term hold also. Because remember, now hot glue doesn't stick a long time to ceramic. Uh, gem tack or E6000, use something a bit stronger and I probably should have used E6000 but I do believe that the gem tack will hold it just fine. But again hot glue will not hold ceramic for a long long time. Alright so now we're going to take our little shoes that we made and I had actually added some Dollar Tree Fun Foam on the bottom as the sole. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your craft knife, you're going to cut a little hole and then you're going to take the paper clip and shove it down inside there because you really you really want to like get that hole big. You want to get a lot, lot of room because you, you don't want to be pushing on these shoes real hard because once you make them you'll realize they're, they're just, um, they're foam. <laughs> they're, they're like dried fun foam. It's hard to describe. It's like, it's just fun foam dried. <laughs> I know I keep saying that. So now you take some uh, gem tack and some hot glue and stick her little shoe on. Um, you'll stick that paper clip all the way up inside there. So then decide where you want to put your other the other foot, um, cut into the fabric, then take a paper clip and bore that hole out. Sorry about the camera shaking. And then put some gem tack on the paper clip, some hot glue on the shoe, and slide it on in. And there you go, she's got her shoes. All right, so now we're going to build her hands while the rest of her dries. So uh, I took some Dollar Tree um, colorful beads, and what I did was I made sure that the hole was big enough. I just took the paper clip and stuffed it into the gem tack, and then I um, stuffed the feather in there. And so I'm going to do the same thing with this one, and I'm going to put some a bouquet of flowers in that hand. So I'm going to cut these little flowers off and then slide them all in there. Now make sure you do a dry fit before you stick the glue in there because at this point I realized it was not big enough and <laughs> so I had to bore it out. So I had to do it again. So here we are doing it again. So make sure you do a dry fit. So. So I got all three of my little flowers in there. Put a little bit of hot glue on the very bottom. This is like the quick hold. And then you're going to let it dry. And I'm blowing it dry trying to cool, cool it quick. <laughs> trying to cool it fast because I'm not patient. Alright, so now the hands are done. 
So next step is we are going to put her nose on to her body. So I take a little gem tack and we'll put a little dollop of gem tack, a little bit of hot glue and stick her nose on there. And I had also given her bangs. By this time I had cut some of the front hair a little bit shorter. And in the very, very end I ended up uh, taking some black paint and coloring that styrofoam up inside of her head. So now I'm cutting a piece of the uh, pipe cleaner and it's actually three inches long. So cut two pieces at three inches. And then you're going to take your needle nose pliers and you're going to roll it just like you did to the shoe. Roll it until it, it's like a little, a little leg, a little, you know. So then you're going to take that and you're going to roll it. You're going to cut a piece of, of fabric for her sleeve. So I don't want to roll it where it's tight. So I'm going to make it a little bit on the bigger side, um, slightly longer than the pipe cleaner. I'm going to cut two pieces. And then I'm going to hem up the cuff with my hot glue gun. Just a little bit. And then you're going to hem up one side. Hem up one side right there. And then you're going to do the other one because I always do them both. Ooh, the hot glue is hot, hot, hot. All right, so now I got them both done and missed a spot there. I, that just didn't want to take. All right, so now you're going to take one of the pipe cleaners and set it down just a little bit above the cuff because remember, you're going to put that little bead in. So here I am deciding which one to go which way. So put a piece of a little bit of hot glue on one side, put your hot pipe cleaner down. Ooh, that thing gets hot. That little piece of metal, oh my goodness, inside there gets so hot. So now roll it over, but not so tight. So I'm trying to just meet the the f two sides of the fabric so that she has like a, um, a more floppy uh, sleeve. It doesn't really matter how you want to do your sleeve. Um, that's just the way I wanted to do her sleeve. And then I glued the very end of her cuff. And then I did a quick measurement of the ball of her hand to make sure it fits on there real good. So now I'm going to glue the top of the sleeve shut. This time I remembered to use my finger protector because I got tired of burning my fingers. I do this all the time. I'm always burning my fingers. Always burning my fingers. All right. So her sleeves ended up actually being a little bit too long and I ended up cutting a little piece off. So better to measure a little long than to measure short, right? So look at how long I have on that other side. It's just, that is just crazy, crazy length on the end. So rolling up this sleeve. And then again, we want to make sure that the bead fits or her hand fits right. So I close it up. Again, this time I didn't use it at first and realized that was burning my finger. <laughs> All right. So now here, this is when I realized that her sleeves or her arms are a little bit on the long side. So I ended up cutting them a little bit shorter. So here I am putting her arm in a fold it down and I, this is I'm like wow her arms long so we'll cut that off and that was much better so now I'm gonna glue it shut again and then measure and cut the other arm the same length remember guys use your craft scissors and not your sewing scissors once you put glue on it or else it becomes a craft scissor and not a sewing scissor. All right, so now I'm going to attach her arms to her side. 
So put a generous amount of hot glue. Because I did not use Gemtac there. I just used hot glue. And that was so hot I had to use my needle nose pliers to push it down. Because I put a lot of glue. Alright, so now we're doing the other sleeve. And remember, a lot of glue. A lot of glue. Fold back the hair. And glue her arm on. All right, and so now I'm going to bend her elbow and I'm going to put her hand on. So I'll put some glue in there and then I'll put her bead in there, her hand. And here I'm looking for her other hand and I can't find it. So I bend her elbow and I had to go make another one. So I'll be back. There we go. Made another one. I think my cat took off with the other one. But, oh well. Just made her another one. So there you go. Now, she's ready to go on her saucer. So you take some gem tack. Squeeze a whole big old dollop there so she won't come off. And then... Put some hot glue down, generous glue, and set her down on there. Give her a good push. Hold her down until she, she uh, cools, because it takes a little bit. You don't want her lifting. All right. So now I'm going to take these little foam flowers that you can get over at the Dollar Tree. And I think they were only out for Valentine's Day. I grabbed myself a, a bag of the red and a bag of the white. I probably should have grabbed more. And these feathers, again, were the ones from Hobby Lobby. So I'm just gluing some of those feathers onto the top of her, her now new hat. Put one on the back. I'm waiting for that to cure. I attached, actually attached the feathers to the um, flower. So now I'm going to put an another flower on the handle. And right at that point, ouch, ouch, burned myself. I got some glue on her hair. So, as an opportunity, I stuck a ladybug on her hair. Because you can't pick that stuff off, so uh, we'll just fix it. Alright, so now I'm going to put another little ladybug right there on, on there. And she actually that thing is actually stuck on there really good. Hopefully it sticks and it doesn't come off. So, when you pull off like the bud of the flower like I have the little bud of, the, of one of the flowers and you're left with the two outer pieces of the flower I actually just put a couple of ladybugs inside of that and then I'm going to glue that to her not to the saucer but I glued it to her and then I had another one, a little white one. See, you pull the bud off the inside, and then you end up with the, the it's like a like a water lily. So then I put, since she wasn't all that big, I just put a white, uh, the white bud. But always save those extra little pieces of the, of the foam flowers. So now I'm going to put a bunch of little ladybugs all over her, and I got these ladybugs on Amazon and if I can find them I'll put the link down below I got ladybugs and I got um, bumblebees so I don't like the way the middle of the flowers look those Dollar Tree fl fake flowers look so horrible so I have these little gems that I got um, from Dollar Tree I want to say about four or five years ago and never had really had a use for them and guess what <laughs> put it inside the little flower it turns them into such a cute little flower it just ups the game they look so much better just you just pull it apart and put a little dollop of hot glue in there grab yourself a little gem with us with those bent needle or tweezers 
and you just put the gems inside there and then they look super cute see look oh so adorable oh my goodness and so now I have these little gems see these little gems I'm gonna make them like buttons down the front of her so push my kickstand away on my hot glue gun and then I'm again gonna put these little gems and they're like little buttons for her right down the front of her I'm trying to find all the same color gems now these gems I got uh, I ordered them a few years ago when I was doing nails and I actually ordered them from China I ordered them off of wish so if you guys use the wish app that is where I got those gems so I put the last little button on her and you don't have to use these gems you can use anything you want I just have so many of these 3D gems that I thought, well, I might as well use them on the gnome. So there she is with her little buttons. And there she is with her little lay bug on her, on her hair. And all around. So, ta-da! She's so cute! Well, hey, wasn't she so fun to make? So I ended up adding another ladybug on her bouquet, one more on top of her shoe because she had a dollop of glue on her shoe. And you all saw that I had a little dribble of hot glue. So as an opportunity, I put a ladybug onto her hair. So if you made it this far, go ahead and hit that like button and hit that subscribe button. It's totally free. It lets YouTube know that you like my content and that I should continue to make these tutorials. And if you want to know when I upload my next video, go ahead and hit that, that notification bell and then choose all notifications and that way you'll get notified when I upload another video. So I appreciate each and every one of you guys that have come to my channel and watch my videos. And until next time, bye!